now that I've got the fire tube and the lower drum set into the truck, I can take an accurate measurement on how tall I need the hopper to be, and I don't want it to exceed the height of the cap. I don't want any extra wind hitting this thing if I can avoid it. So from the fire tube to the top of the cab, I've got 32 inches that I could take up of hopper space. Now, I'm gonna have to cut the hopper two pieces down and put them together. On my last truck, it just wouldn't work out the way that I wanted to, and I ended up welding the top and bottom together into a single piece hopper. This one, I'm gonna leave as a two piece hopper because these systems, they're known for in a couple years, the top of the hopper gets a little bit thin because of the corrosive wood gas. So you want it to be replaceable easily if you can. So this one will be a two piece. I know that I've got 32 inches to play with. When I go to put the filler lid on, that's gonna take up two inches. So that knocks me down to a 30 inch hopper. Now, because I want it to be two piece, I have to utilize the barrels in whatever they will give me. This barrel is gonna get cut right in the middle of this rib and the other barrel will get cut on the bottom side. That way they will nest together this flare coming over the top of that one and I can put a clamp ring right here with a bead of silicone around it to seal it together. It's not gonna come out at 30 inches like I want it, but it looks like it's gonna be about 29 and a quarter. So it's as close as I can get and I'll be happy with that because it won't be reaching over the cab. I won't have any additional wind drag on the truck. With wood gas, you don't wanna lose anything. You already lost some horsepower running on it. So I'm going to try and gain everything I can by not having wind drag over the top of the truck. I'm already going to have a little extra wind drag just from the bed sticking out. But pros and cons, what can you do? I'm making it the way I want it. So let's get this cut in half. And after it's cut, deburred, make sure all your edges are straight. That's how it should look. Your top half will nestle into the bottom half. Put the clamp ring on it. Now, there's much more work to do to this hopper, but chest fit right now is good. We also need it together for the next piece. But I also won't lie to you guys. That was a turd to get on there. And I say that because both of these barrels, like I said, they're used, they're bent up. They've They've already had a hard life. So these ribs were not straight. I went through and did a little massaging on both of them with a ball peen. Then I ended up taking the clamp ring over to the vise and using a ball peen and actually splaying out the lips all the way around to be able to grab on and uh, sink it down. But anyways, so there's the hopper and we are at 29 and a quarter. So that's a good height. We're going to gain just a little bit when the puffer lid goes on, gain a little bit more when the fill lid goes on. Um, next thing we need to do is some cooling tubes and some tar drains. I need to go get this set onto the truck so I can figure out where I'm going to place those at. Before I get too far ahead of myself, there's a bottom barrel feature that's uh, kind of critical. You need to be able to figure out how to get the ash out of there. All the char and everything that's going to bypass the grate. So, Normally we do an ammo box on the Wayne Keith build and they're underneath right here. I don't want to lose any more ground clearance because I'm already set up level with the body and level with the frame. I don't want anything hanging lower than that point, which means I need to have a side exit. I don't want it over here because that's going to interfere later on with some camouflaging I have at work. So I need it right here. My other truck, I have a 30 caliber ammo can that's welded on. It's too small. I don't like trying to get my arm up in there and get the char cleaned out. So this time I went with 50 cal can and I simply laid it in place where I wanted it, where it was going to swing and clear the tire, where it was going to clear um, leaf spring bolt, traced it out, cut that radius, and it was in right there. The only downside, I've yet to find an ammo can that doesn't have a lid that falls off that direction. Not a huge deal. I'm only gonna have the lid on it while I get it welded in place, make sure it's gonna be airtight. And when the barrel comes out for the last time, when it goes to get its insulation, I'll go ahead and cut that window out. But now that I have this open, let me go ahead and get this welded onto here. 
So I tacked all the way around it. Um, this material is, is just so stinking thin. It's hard to work with. And it reminded me, yesterday, me and Jan were talking on uh, the Drive On Wood Forum, talking about welding this super, super thin material. So in this instance, I have not cut out the inside hole. You can see the barrel is still there. So this is a solid backer. And we're welding basically a T-weld. Well, when doing that with sheet metal, it tends to distort a lot. So even if you spend the time and you grind it to a super, super tight fit, no air gap at all, if you can avoid it, it makes it easier to weld. Even while you're welding, it's gonna move around. If you look across the top of the box, you can see right there, it warped down. So that screwed up my fitment right here as I'm coming along welding. And this, I, this is what I call stitch welding. I get a tack set and I start on the leading edge of the tack and I give it just enough heat till I watch the puddle fall back on top of my tack. Then I move forward, let the puddle fall back. Move forward, let the puddle fall back. And that's how you fill a very, very small gap in super tight sheet metal like this. But when you do that, see if I can get close enough you can make it out. You see those little tiny minor inclusions right there? That's where the wire stopped feeding when I let off of the trigger on the MIG gun. Those little inclusions like that are very commonly a pinhole leak. And you can see each tack, how I let it build up and flow back. If I'm working on a little bit thicker sheet metal, I'll let it build up and then I'll pull the puddle back over the top of my last tack. Then I'll move a little bit further forward than this and pull the puddle back. So you're always working your heat back on top of your thinner metal the whole time. Um, actually, that's what I was doing on this weld up here. I would start on top of the tack, start my puddle, pull it back. Start on top of the puddle, pull it back and I was working the heat back into this thicker edge right here and the thicker spot where I already had weld. So this material here is 22 gauge, but where I already had a tack on it, that's probably eighth inch. So I've got a bunch more meat there that'll hold the heat. Now, same thing down here on the ammo box, I have this weld built up, so I've got a bunch of meat right here, even though this is super thin and this is super thin. Now I've got a thick spot. Now I'm going to come back with an overpass and cover all of those little tiny inclusions all the way through and I won't have any pinholes. That's how I'm doing this super super thin material and not having any leaks like that. And yes, it takes practice, trust me, years of practice. And the reason I learned to do it this way was when I had only a flux core welder and I was doing floor pans and quarter panels and all sorts of stuff. Now this all would have been covered up with body filler. You wouldn't have ever seen it, but your base weld was junk and I just couldn't let it slide. So I learned how to do this um, with flux core and I brought it over and started using it with MIG and it, it works a treat. So now I'm gonna go through and put a cover pass across those two and you'll see the difference. It'll look like I did it in one pass, but I didn't, it's cheating. So minor first stitch pass with minor inclusions cover pass. Ain't gonna be no leaks in that. Now I got three more sides to do. I'm not gonna be able to do the back side or the bottom while the drum is in, so I'm just gonna do the top right here and probably get a couple more tacks around the rest and I'll weld the rest of this up the last time the barrel comes out. So now the hopper's sitting on the truck and we need to connect the upper gutter and the lower gutter down into the tar tank and the front rail assembly. So what I got going on here, I have some inch and seven eighths OD uh, galvanized fence pipe material. It's what I'll be using for my tar drain and for my cooler tubes. My last build I did inch and five eighths and I had an issue with the tar pipe stopping up. So I'm going a little bit bigger, but I'm also running with whatever material I got. This is what I got, so this is what I'm using. So it's gonna drop into the rail right here. I have two pieces cut on 22.5 angles welded together. That comes up to a, a flat surface. And I want to make sure that I'm going to clear this lip, this lip, and the biggest lip, this clamp ring. So I've got a drywall T-square, and what I'm doing, set it in place, and I have that just 
magnetized right now. I've already traced it out where I want it. And I use the T-square to bring it out as far as that pipe will be sitting. You can see the pipe is right behind it. It's going to be sitting right there. And I'm square up off of the top. I got about three quarters of an inch clearance on my thickest part. So that'll work. So get this out of the way. Now, like I said, this is just magnetized right here, but I already have it traced out to where it's going to be. So now I'm going to pull all of this out, cut that hole out. We'll get this pipe welded in and then start building the stand pipe that will come up to the first and the second gutters up here to pick up all of our condensates and our tars and get it out of there, out into the tank where it can be drained off later. So I had the hole marked. I came in with the shortest drill bit and a 90 degree drill I could. I popped the hole top and bottom just inside of my line. Took a little short piece of the pipe, the diameter I'm using, set it on there. I traced out the inside radius. I burned the hole out with plasma cutter, then came in back behind it with a flap wheel on die grinder opened it up to the right diameter, made a nice smooth transition. I got all the edges cleaned up. This guy is ready to go in place. The only problem with that is if I weld this in right now, it would make building the rest of the standpipe a turd. So this is going to get tacked in place, and then I'm going to build the standpipe and both the standoffs that go into the hopper gutters um, all at once. Then I will cut my tack welds, pull it out, fully weld both of the standoffs, then weld this in place. And now that would seem stupid because then the hopper is locked onto the bed. You can't pull the fire tube or anything out. This is gonna get cut in half, probably somewhere about right here. And once it's cut, the hopper can be removed and there will be a quick coupler that goes on right here, either um, another Fernco coupler or a piece of uh, silicone pipe and a couple hose clamps. And a little heat shield right here to keep the heat away from it and that'll be the drain okay. pipe. little detail time so you can see i used my uh, drywall t-square and i squared off the edge of that pipe straight up so i know where my drain's gonna be see where i traced out my first hole as soon as the, the way i do this i pop a hole and i see where i'm at on the inside we want to drain as much of this tar out as we can and the condensate so we need that drain to be down low in the gutter. My first hole where I traced it would have been way too high. I'd have had uh, three quarters of an inch of liquids laying in the bottom in here versus now I'm almost flush. That's why when I pop the hole, I use a step bit. I see where I come through and I just keep pushing the drill bit in, keep stepping through until I get as close as I want to the bottom. Now, because we're going through the actual bottom lip of a drum right here, this is where the two pieces are welded together. You can see right there, the layers, the inside layer, the roll, and the outside crimp. Because we cut below that, the bottom floor of the gutter in here, this piece here, and the outside piece are actually separated. So I open up as down low as far as I wanna go, and then I actually build it back up with weld. So I've got maybe, eh, there's enough for you to hang your fingernail on right there. That's how much condensate will be in there that isn't draining out. Once I have that established, then I take a piece of the pipe I'm using, set it in place, line up the bottom of the hole, and then trace it out where it's gonna be. Now I'll knock it out with the plasma cutter to this other line that you see I now have correctly drawn. And then I'm going to re-weld the edges over here so that these pieces are all one piece again. Then I won't have any leaks coming out of the hopper down inside. I want to catch all of it, not feed it back in the fire. But that's an itty bitty little detail. Focus you. Come on. That's something you wouldn't know until you got this far into the build. So. We'll, we'll secret if you get this far. I've got the hole opened up to size. Now I've gone back through and welded all that metal back together. Now I'm gonna polish it smooth. Back in with the flap routes all polished up. Come back in with our piece of pipe scrap. I can open up the bottom corners a hair bit more, but I'm fine with that. That's gonna drain really good. So you guys remember the trick I taught you last time? It was back on my build thread a long time ago on the Toyota. 
about jointing pipe to pipe. Super, super easy. Let me grab a piece here. Okay, let's say you want to joint that pipe to this one at a perfect 90 degrees. This is 48 millimeter pipe, so we're going to divide it by three. Uh, I don't remember what that comes out to. Anyways, one third. So you're going to take and set your caliper to whatever that measurement is, start with a flat cut, scribe a line all the way around. All you have to do, set your pipe in a chop saw and just kiss that line at a 45 degree cut and that'll take a slice off, rotate it 180 degrees, take another slice off. That will leave you with two very flat small corner edges up here and it's so close to a fit up that it's actually weldable but if you round the corners off just a little bit with a flat wheel it works like a charm but it right up easily weldable. Now on my other truck that is exactly what I did and the bottom gutter came in at 90 degree angle to the tar drain pipe. I have three or four times now had a stoppage in that pipe so this time I want an angle on it so it's got every chance possible to get that stuff out of the gutter and not clog up. So using the exact same trick, I know that I wanted a 22 and a half degree angle on this pipe. So I cut a 22.5. I repeated it on the other side. And usually you're gonna do this at length. If you don't know how long it's gonna be, you leave a bunch extra in it and then cut it down to where you need. <clears throat> so cut a 22.5 on one side, exact same thing. Set your caliper to one third and follow that line and scribe all the way around it, one third the distance of the diameter of the pipe back. Make the same cuts on the chop saw at 45 degrees. That will joint your pipe at whatever angle you cut your pipe at. So I wanted a 22.5, I started the 22.5, cut those two 45s off, and there's my pipe. Then I just cut it down to shorter and shorter and shorter till I got the length I wanted to where it lined up and now it's ready to weld. But of course, I need to get in here and cut out the hole into the bottom gutter and then cut out the hole going into the drain pipe. So that's the next thing you gotta do. Then this guy can get welded in and the tar drain pipe is all tacked up and ready. I can pull it off and fully weld it. Yeah, that was fun. Ground all the galvanizing off, got it fully welded all the way around both sides. You know, holes are nice and flush into the bottom of the gutter, so they're gonna drain really nicely. I made sure I deburred the inside of my welds. I went in with a file, cleaned everything up, then I went in with flat disc and polished it. This, this one particular tube, you do have to be pretty critical about it. You want it to flow the tar and the condensates as easily as possible. So this is the one you're gonna spend a whole lot of time on, or at least you should, I think, my opinion. Um, yes, I did have a barrel lid clamped on when I welded the top. I don't worry about it down here because I'm above the bottom of the barrel. It doesn't distort that much. So yeah, that was uh, several hours of the work. And now I get to cut it apart because, you know, two-piece hopper. So it's going to get whacked right here. There's going to have to be a, a coupler in place right here. And then I'm also going to cut it off down here and weld the bottom of this down onto the spout down on the frame rail and then tar drain is done next thing is going to be the cooler tubes um, i'm not even going to bother videoing that it's super super simple it's take this exact same idea of the uh, top and bottom gutters connecting each other but instead of worrying about it draining they just need to connect and they don't have to be in the bottom of the hopper they don't have to be flush you're just looking for air circulation that's all you need so it's from the top gutter to the bottom gutter, a pipe going across. And that's gonna change on everybody's build depending on you know, how much room you have. That's why I have the heat exchanger body sitting up here right now. I'm gonna put the hopper back on and measure out where I can place those tubes and uh, start building them. So you guys will see that later. Thanks for watching.